Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and this headline certainly caught my attention. It comes from crypto media outlet You Today, and this piece is titled Ripple CEO Cautions Public Companies Against Holding Bitcoin. And I was a little surprised simply because I know that Brad Garlinghouse is long Bitcoin. He's been very clear about that. But it's also true that even though he is long, he offers fair critiques, which is a very similar position to what I hold, uh, which is like, let's just not pretend that there are tremendous shortcomings with, uh, with Bitcoin from a technological perspective. Uh, and I'm not even talking about necessarily the long term viability of it. I'm just thinking uh, it's slow, it's not efficient and so on and so forth, those types of things, right? And so uh, Brad Garlinghouse tweeted something out that uh, caught the attention of mainstream, well, not mainstream media, uh, crypto media. And, uh, and so we'll be going from there. But it's, it's really just along the, the idea of how is the, how, how are governments around the world? That's the bigger question, I'd say. How are, how are they going to react as the Bitcoin blockchain continues to be adopted, even if purely as a store of value. Now, to be clear, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, so do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I just think it's fun to talk about this stuff and make YouTube videos, but that is all it is. Uh, if you would please ever so delicately tap the like button, I would appreciate it. And also, if you are like me, perhaps you enjoy hearing from Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and what he thinks on various crypto-related topics, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel because you will find yourself in good company at least here. This is an XRP centric channel. In we go. Uh, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse once again took a shot at Payments Behemoth Square for investing 1% of its treasury reserves into Bitcoin on a no in a uh, November 9th tweet. The executive says that public companies that choose to hold the world's largest cryptocurrency may want to pay attention to climate change related regulations. Now, um, to be clear, and I always, I always like to make sure that people understand where I'm coming from when I uh, cover a topic like this, this in a video, I am not ever going to offer political commentary. I have no interest in alienating, alienating like half of my audience because I understand that there are going to be different views with something like climate change. I'm just reporting on this because it's, it's in crypto news now. Uh, but they have this little subheading here, mitigating climate risks. Uh, corporate adoption is undoubtedly one of the biggest 2020 trends in the crypto industry, with MicroStrategy and Jack Dorsey Square making trailblazing moves, which I've reported on um, fairly extensively because, frankly, uh, MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor has just been endlessly in the news in crypto, and I'd say deservedly so. Uh, th th what Talk about a bold move. His company invested $425 million directly into Bitcoin, Bitcoin specifically. Uh, just purely as a treasury reserve asset, and they have no intention of selling it ever. They just needed to do something uh, with their cash, which was effectively like an ice cube melting. Because it's even, even if it just sits there and it's numerically always the same in terms of quantity of United States dollars, it's, it's losing purchasing power every single year thanks to inflation. And so, um, after calling MicroStrategy's bet bold and brilliant in September, Garlinghouse has now adopted a more critical stance towards companies that hold a Bitcoin. Uh, his most recent tweet refers to the New York Times article that lays out how uh, President-elect Joe Biden is going to tackle uh, environmental issues with his executive orders. Uh, from a technical perspective, just by the way, by the way, right now, uh, there that's not true. Uh, there, the election, like it or not, and uh, we wish that it would cleaner. Uh, I understand Joe Biden is projected by mainstream media to win, but he is not. Uh, as I record this, he is not president-elect. Um, you know, the way the United States Constitution works, it is not the case that uh, media, you know, mainstream media, de declares who the president-elect is, and then it is so. That is not how this works. <laughs> just to be super clear, but, um, it obviously, in all likelihood, it looks like that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying that's a, that's a factually incorrect statement. Um, anyway, on his first day in the White House, uh, Biden would sign an executive order that would make a public companies disclose climate risks. And so here's specifically what they're talking about. Let me just show, pull up the actual tweet from Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse. And he wrote number six. And so I was like, wait, what the hell is that? So I had to open up this uh, New York Times article titled Nine Things the Biden Administration Could Do Quickly on the Environment. You can see here's what number six is. This is what Brad Garlinghouse is talking about. Create new financial regulations. Mr. Biden has also said he will, on the first day of his administration, sign an executive order requiring public companies 
uh, to disclose climate change related financial risks and greenhouse gas emissions in their operations. Now, with how inefficient the Bitcoin blockchain is in terms of, uh, you know, just uh, proof of work, you know, which solves the double spin problem, uh, not ideal. Even, even if you make an argument that much of, of the energy, and, and look, I've seen arguments along these lines, maybe they're legit, maybe they're not. I just, it's hard to verify the validity of some of these reports, but there are reports out there that I've read, you, you may have come across yourself, that uh, state that the vast majority of energy that's going into um, into Bitcoin mining is actually coming from renewable resources. And if true, super duper, okay, better than not, I suppose. But um, I, I haven't seen anybody sufficiently fact check that. It's more, it's more like it's a, a guess. So again, if it's true, great, super duper, but um, there's still a huge chunk of the energy that is not. So that's a factor to consider here. And so Brad Garlinghouse wrote the following, Biden to require public companies to disclose climate change related activities and greenhouse gas emissions in their operations. Love to see the action on climate change. First, NYDFS, now this. Public companies holding Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and then parentheses he writes, um, square, may want to pay attention. And indeed, from a, <laughs> and even if it's just an executive order, like this is still uh, something government related that would certainly be affecting companies that are headquartered in the United States. So interesting to see if this will, uh, how this would, uh, you know, affect uh, entities choosing to or choosing not to hold Bitcoin. And so you got to think like, even if the government uh, ends up taxing, even if that's the ultimate outcome, which, and look, all of this remains to be seen. So like, we're, we're kind of in speculation territory here, which is fine, you know. I just don't like not, not so hypey type stuff, but a little healthy speculation is fine. Uh, you know, even if there's some sort of tax, if it's not worse than, inflation then there you go <laughs> you know and so hopefully it wouldn't be something that's ongoing purely for holding it once the transaction has occurred anyway so i can't imagine it's something that would fundamentally be a problem i guess it's okay to be on the radar but uh, perhaps brad garlinghouse given that he actually tweeted about this and he doesn't tweet that frequently um he, he may feel strongly about this uh, that for me like even if there's something along these lines happens and there's some sort of financial penalty as a result of all of this or extra hoops that have to be jumped through in some way even if there's isn't some sort of tremendous, uh, you know, monetary penalty for, for purchasing or holding Bitcoin. You know, it's, it's, I just, I can't imagine that it's going to be something that is um, so detrimental that businesses wouldn't want to hold a, an asset that is genuinely uh, better at being gold than gold is at being gold. It's truly scarce. And so like uh, all the critiques that, um, you know, Brad Garlinghouse has stated about Bitcoin, I'm on board with all that especially with the concentration of mining, like all of these are legitimate critiques, but I still don't think it's, it's gonna, actually you can tell, like, look, look, look at how people are actually behaving. Like there's no indication that people are going to stop, um, you know, stop purchasing and holding Bitcoin, even, even companies, it looks like that's the direction that they're going to be going there. And so here, here's what Brad Garlinghouse tweeted out about uh, MicroStrategy. This is on August 11th, 2020. As I was saying, crypto shines like gold. MicroStrategy's move to diversify in favor of digital assets is bold and brilliant. One of the first companies to do so, but they certainly won't be the last. So he's all he's all for this. To me, it's just like Brad Garlinghouse just bringing to attention the fact that there's going to be perhaps some regulatory changes. Fair enough, right? Uh, fair enough point as far as I'm concerned here. And then um, we had this article. Take a look at this. It's on the same topic, effectively. Um, the Daily Hoddle. Will the United States push to ban Bitcoin? Bitcoin bull Anthony Pompliano outlines risks facing leading cryptocurrency. It's like, are we still talking about the concept of governments actually banning Bitcoin in 2020? Because, uh, my friends, that is not a happening. If it ever goes the way of uh, my favorite avian, extinct avian creature, the dodo, then uh, it's it's going to be based on what it is at its core, not because of government intervention here. That much is crystal clear. So anyway, Anthony Pompliano, co-founder of Morgan Creek Digital and outspoken Bitcoin bull, is addressing the possibility of the U.S. government cracking down on Bitcoin and how exactly it could play out. In an interview with Dave Lee, uh, Pompliano says that if all governments digitize their currencies, it would in turn accelerate the adoption and normalization of digital wallets and put digital currencies in the same playing field as cryptocurrencies. Pompliano says that 
after everyone becomes comfortable with digital wallets. They will likely move towards Bitcoin and the idea of hard money, tempting governments to ban Bitcoin. And so here's a quote. When that occurs, I think that governments are going to go through an exercise. They have two options. They can either do nothing and basically not try to ban it, or they could try to embrace it, or they could try to ban it. The countries that choose to clamp down are the ones that are going to suffer the most because the one thing that Bitcoin has at its core is the advantage that it's fully decentralized. And uh, that I'm a supporter of. So like, even though there, there very well may be countries that uh, try to go that route, they'll, they'll be the ones that lose out because all of the, um, the, the spurring of economic development as a result of what's being built within the cryptocurrency space, those countries uh, are basically opting out of that. That's not good for their economies. And so I don't think that the vast majority are going to do it because like, even if you opt out, you can't make every government on the planet do it and not every government will. And so here we are a decade later. Well, more than that, you know, but how long has Bitcoin been around? Like more, 12 years, whatever. Anyway, um, however, Pompliano says that because of the geopolitical chessboard, the United States will see that banning Bitcoin won't come with many benefits. And here's another quote. So let's say the U.S. literally said we're going to ban ownership. And if you own Bitcoin, then we're going to put you in jail. I think what you would see immediately is other global superpowers immediately embrace and adopt Bitcoin because it is their opportunity to get off the dollar standard. They want off the dollar, right? Russia and Putin have talked about this. China has talked about this. Many countries think it's expensive. It is dangerous. You can be sanctioned. All the things that the United States uses as an advantage by weaponizing the dollar globally, uh, that's been great because they control the dollar and they've got a really big military, the most powerful military in the world. When we get into a world where all of a sudden the U.S. only states, quote, uh, you know, we are, we are going to ban ownership of something, and these other countries have full accessibility to it, I think there's the, the, this game of they're going to go and try to do it. And for that reason, I actually think the U.S. will never ban it. I think the U.S. is not naive. And to me, that actually sounds like a pretty damn reasonable point right here. So it's it's like admittedly, it's always fun to talk through this stuff, but it is still kind of like conceptually silly. If anybody really thinks that it's going to get banned in 2020, well, either you're new to the space, in which case, hey, I'm glad you're asking the questions. But if, if you've been around for a while and actually looked into this and you still think this is possible, well, you are just a silly goose, my friend, because it ain't coming down. <laughs> like, the hammer is not going to come down like that, I swear. <laughs> like, I just I can't imagine that freaking happening. So anyway, regardless, interesting stuff, fun topic for conversation. <sighs> there we go. See, look, I avoided uh, making political commentary. We're good, right? Yeah, that's good. I'll tell you, yeah, I'm not, that's two things I'm never going to talk about on this channel. Um, politics and religion. No, 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 and a no, 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 not ever. Definitely not ever. You know, the closest I'll ever get to politics is anything that has to do with crypto, like I'll mention stuff like this, but as far as sharing an opinion, I mean, unless it's very directly uh, crypto related, then I won't even be doing that. All right, that's it for this one. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.